Welcome to the Radar Radio Pharmaceutical Internal Dose course. My name is Michael Staben. I'll be your instructor for the entire course. The course has 10 chapters <clears throat> or modules, which we'll work through one at a time. The website has a text file uh, that underlies uh, the slides that we're going to use. So you can refer to either one, usually the slides uh, being taught by a person are more instructive than just reading uh, a text file, but uh, you can do either and they're all available to you. So the first uh, chapter we're going to do is just basic dose assessment techniques, the mathematics of how we do this, and then other modules will talk about specific implementation of different techniques and phantoms and models and all kinds of things. The idea of the course is to teach basic internal dose concepts and summarize the best current methods and models that we use for this purpose. Uh, one of the main goals, which we're going to do in this lecture, is to show how a very simple system can describe all existing internal dose systems. When people look at all the different internal dose systems out there, they get confused sometimes because they all look so different and confusing. They all boil down to one very simple equation, which we're going to develop here in a few minutes. And once you understand that simple equation, you can understand all of the existing um, permutations, if you will, of that system. And we're interested not only in techniques, but uh, models that implement the techniques and tools. Tools are very important. You can't do internal dose calculations by hand most of the time. You need software tools. And we're going to talk about some of those and also do numerical examples. Um, you can listen to lectures all day and it makes sense, but until you actually implement um, some of the applications with specific calculations, um, your understanding may be incomplete. As I said, other people have looked at the various systems that are out there and have become intimidated. Uh, many times I, I do health physics, which is general radiation safety, and when I say internal dose, many health physicists get really nervous. They don't know they think this is really hard. It's really not that hard. It's really very simple. It's not that difficult conceptually. The complexity is difficult because in a given problem, you may have many, many contributing terms, but you just have to add up uh, the parts and computers are very good at that. I wrote a computer program many years ago because I got tired of doing this by hand. So now there's a computer program that can do all this for you, but don't ever use a computer program until you are familiar with what the program is doing and that you can check what the computer program is telling you by doing some hand calculational checks. So computer programs are very good, uh, but uh, be very careful in just trusting a computer program, including mine. So you're going to look at uh, very several, let's just say, uh, dosimetry systems that have all kinds of equations. And what is all this stuff? Well, there's really only one equation that you have to learn. We're going to learn it in the next few minutes. And once you understand it, we'll show how it is reflected in the various implemented systems that are out there, MIRD, ICRP, radar, and so on. They all are based on this one equation. If you understand the one equation, you understand internal dosimetry. So uh, you'll use these other published systems, but you have to understand, number one, what they are before you use them in software. And number two, you'll see that this one equation is all you need to understand. The principal quantity of interest we are going to calculate is, generally speaking, absorbed dose, um, also equivalent dose. And the ultimate goal here is the protection of people. And absorbed dose is generally correlated with radiation effects. And so, therefore, if we can understand absorbed dose and understand how that relates to biological effects, and we'll have 
uh, a significant module just on biological effects of radiation, uh, particularly in this course as relates to nuclear medicine dosimetry and therapy. We have to calculate doses for diagnostic drugs. That's more of a bookkeeping effort to get drugs approved. Once we are the drug is approved, you can use a diagnostic drug as you wish. As we get into therapy, um, calculation of absorbed dose is very important to patient safety and uh, the efficacy of your procedure. What is absorbed dose? I'm guessing everybody who's taking this course at least knows this. Uh, this is uh, the strict definition is from the International Committee on Radiation Units and Measurements, ICRU. And they give this fancy definition that dose is d epsilon dm, where d epsilon is the mean energy imparted by ionizing radiation to matter of mass dm. It's just energy per unit mass. That's all we're talking about here. The units of absorbed dose are energy per unit mass, erg per gram, or joule per kilogram. The special units are the rad, which is 100 ergs per gram, or the gray in the norm, newer uh, SI system of units. Uh, gray is one joule per kilogram, and if you work out the units, a joule per kilogram, uh, one gray equals 100 rad. Now, there are situations in which certain types of radiation seem to have more effectiveness when leading to certain radiobiological endpoints given the same amount of absorbed dose. Thus, researchers have developed a term called the RBE, the Relative Biological Effectiveness, and the English term is fudge factor. I don't know if that's common to everyone listening to the course, but it's just a, a factor that just says, we don't know why, but, uh, and that's why I, being a little extreme when I call it an admission of ignorance, but it is. Um, why is, uh, for instance, a gray of alpha particle dose 20 times more effective than a gray of uh, gamma dose? There are reasons you can express, but we just come up with a number. The RBE, however, is based in a fairly complex way. It depends on the experiment, the observed effect, the dose rate, and so on. And there are literally thousands of RBEs out there defined by researchers since the early 1900s when we started studying the effects of radiation. So the ICRP, which we'll get to in a minute, the International Commission on Radiological Protection, has tried to simplify this for purposes of radiation protection. And they take all these different studies of RBE for different types of radiation and express a single factor, which is called the radiation weighting factor. It was formerly called the quality factor. But if you take the absorbed dose in rad or gray, multiply by the radiation weighting factor, you get a thing called equivalent dose. And the radiation weighting factors are dimensionless. So the basic units are still ergs per gram or joules per kilogram. However, we define special units to show that we have applied that radiation weighting factor, namely the rem and sievert. So the rad times the radiation weighting factor gives you equivalent dose in rem. And the, uh, the absorbed dose in sievert, uh, excuse me, in gray times the radiation weighting factor gives you the equivalent dose in sieverts or sievert. You don't really need to have an S on there, but that's a discussion for another day. So the ICRP has changed these values a little bit over the years, not very much, honestly. Current values are shown in this table uh, in ICRP publication. 60 alpha particles, as I mentioned a minute ago, or 20. At almost all other kinds of radiation we're going to deal with the radiation weighting factor is 1, so a rad equals a rem and a gray equals a sievert. For neutrons, it's a very complex uh, function of energy, and neutrons are absolutely unimportant. 